The Patrick Regan Show. Call in now, 865-243-TALK. That's 243-8255. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. This is The Patrick Regan Show. Each week we are here talking about how we as a country are flirting with disaster and how you can fix that. How you can help walk this country back from the brink and towards freedom and liberty. Walking along with us is the station here in Knoxville broadcasting this message of freedom and liberty. 100.3 WNOX. We are pumping out 100,000 watts of radio frequency power. Enabling us to be heard in five states and two time zones. We are also piping the message onto the internet, so no matter where you are in the world, if you have unfiltered internet, you have us. Be aware, though, in parts of this world, namely China, North Korea, that'd be North Korea for people not in East Tennessee, and even Washington, D.C., this message of freedom and liberty is not welcome. So if you live in those types of areas, be sure and use headphones so you won't be caught by the governmental authorities listening to this blasphemous ideas being presented here. The address on the internet, if you'd like to listen, is WNOXFM.com. Which reminds me, on the last show, I stated you can listen to this show every Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which was correct. But I made an error in my quick mental calculating of GMT time, the correct time would be 1900 hours Greenwich Mean Time. Thank you to my dad for correcting me after last week's show. That address again is WNOXFM.com. Another person who spends half his day correcting my errors is our show producer, Tori, sitting right next <laughs> door and playing the air guitar to Molly Hatchet. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on! Yeah. Hey, I just want to say, you know, if you're in a hurry, and you can make note of this, Tori, if you're in a hurry, and let's say you're trying to get to a radio show, <laughs> and usually I bring the guys here something to eat. So, if you go by a Wendy's, and you see a sign that says, hey, we're closed due to a fire, and you think, I'll just run down the street to a Burger King, don't do it unless you have about 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, in the drive through I mean, when, when they have valet parking for the drive through then something's wrong. So, <laughs> but that was um, a little hairy coming yeah, in here. You had a bogus right the, burger experience, right? Yes, I did. I was I was sitting in the drive through kept looking at the clock and thinking, gee, am I going to make it or I'm, <laughs> do I need to start texting Tori and say, you're going to have to start this show. <laughs> so, But I did make it. Make it, we did. Yes. So, it was uh, kind of hairy there. So. Well, I'm glad to see you. Oh, yes. And thank you for the burger. Oh, you're very welcome. Now, Tori can make it through the next couple of hours here. Oh, yeah. Sitting there watching the Derek, uh, the press conference about Derek Dooley. Dooley's not on it. But, yes, he is gone. He is yeah. history. You knew that was coming. He is no more. Yes. He is an ex-coach. He is no longer king. <laughs> he is just to be. Yeah. Well, you know, if the station wanted me to leave... And they'd pay me $5 million to do it, I'd probably head out the door. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Favorite part. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Had to get that part in. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> People probably tune in and say, are there kids running the station during this hour? Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Getting on with the show. Thank you for tuning in and listening again this week. Like every week, we have a lot to get to. But first, I would like again to thank the great state of Texas for standing up for the rights of its citizens. I had a story about them a couple of weeks ago involving Attorney General of Texas advising the United Nations elections monitors that they would be arrested for breaking election law if they tried to monitor polling places within that state. That was, uh, I think it was the 28th of uh, October when we had that show. Now, Texas Representative David Simpson pre-filed a bill called the Texas Travel Freedom Act. This bill would make it a criminal act to intentionally touch parts. <laughs> I won't read the, since it's Sunday, but it, touching parts, including touching through clothing, 
without probable cause in the process of determining whether to grant someone access to a public venue or means of public transportation. A public servant acting under color of his office or employment commits an offense if he removes a child younger than 18 years of age from the physical custody or control of a parent or a guardian of the child or a person standing in the stead of a parent or guardian of the child. Simpson said that since the federal government won't back off these intrusive and unconstitutional searches, now what he's talking about, of course, is the TSA. The responsibility of protecting its citizens falls to the states and ultimately to the people themselves. Now, if you live in Texas, you need to be sure and write your representative and have them sign on as a co-sponsor of this legislation. It's uh, Texas House Bill 80. If you don't live in Texas, then you need to write your local state-level representatives and have them introduce similar legislation during the next session. However, you're going to have to help sell this to the rest of people of your state. Uh, you're going to need everyone you can to help pressure your state legislatures to pass this bill. Uh, just getting it introduced won't be enough. And, it, you know, the, the fact is, and I'll, I'll just be honest with you here real quick. As you know, I'll always be. If you aren't going to try to see this legislation through, then don't bother getting it introduced. Because you're only going to harm its chances of getting passed in other states. You see, each time a bill dies without being passed, it tells the legislatures, legislators that there is not enough support to back it, even if it's not in their own state. If a particular bill is introduced one year in a neighboring state and it fails, then it gets, then it gets say, introduced in their home state, they're going to wonder just how much support it really has and will this representative suffer anything for not supporting or voting for it. You know, it's, it's much easier in government to not do something, to say no, to stick with the status quo them for someone to stick their neck out on an issue and possibly get it cut off but anyway i wanted to start the show off with that the great state of texas sticking up for the rights of its citizens we are up on the first break already we have a lot to get to and we'll get started right after these important messages from people helping to keep the show on the air Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. <laughs> Nothing like cramming food down your throat. Uh, we're just sitting here having our own conversation. We'll just totally forget about being on the radio. Yeah, <laughs> talk about parenting and, <laughs> parenting and how Patrick does not need kids. <laughs> I don't know if they would survive the experience. <laughs> I got, might not either. I've got two. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can keep them. <laughs> uh, I just don't think it would work for Patrick. <laughs> and even that gets harder and harder. Yes, I'm going to not understand why a child acts like a child and not an adult. That's just, I'm not, I'm never going to understand that. Why won't you act grown up? Well, it's because I'm six, Dad. <laughs> so. Girls, if you're listening, uh, we're joking. Yes. We're, <laughs> yes. I'm not joking. He is. I don't want kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. Okay, getting on with the show here. Second segment of the Patrick Riggins Show. One of the quickest shows on the radio today. And why is that? It's because we have so much stuff going on that it goes by quickly. For me, too. Now, this last week, Representative Ron Paul gave what he called his farewell speech from the floor of the House of Representatives. If you're a regular listener to this show, you know what a great fan of his we are here. And I would like to play you his whole speech, but unfortunately... We don't have the time on this show for that. Not to mention it'd be redundant since it is available on C-SPAN's website. Plus, it is better for you to have to go out and find it because doing so will get you used to doing research on the Internet and checking up on what people are telling you. I will give you a shortcut to it, though, if you'd like. You can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. There you'll see the link posted over there. If you click on it, you'll be taken to the page on C-SPAN's site where the speech has been archived. Now, you don't have to have an account on Facebook to access our site. Just type in the address, and you can see everything listed there. It is a public page. 
You'll get a pop-up on the page asking you to sign in for a Facebook account. Don't bother with that if you don't want to. You'll see the link there below the pop-up. Just click on that, and you'll go to Ron Paul's speech. I do have a few clips from it. As I said, the whole thing is worth a listen if you have a chance. He makes a lot of good points. To be honest, though, it isn't anything you have not heard said by me right here on this show. But uh, now I'm not equating myself to Ron Paul. I'm just saying you've probably heard this already. But I realize some people like to hear it from another source, so there you go. Dr. Paul starts out with what he sees as a as the problem with Congress today. The major stumbling block to real change in Washington is the total resistance to admitting that the country is broke. This has made compromising just to agree to increase spending inevitable since neither side has any intention on cutting spending. The country and the Congress will remain divisive since there's no loot left to divvy up. So with this problem, and as you have heard on the show, why do people of this country stand for it? Why do we have a low voter turnout? Why do we not have a huge surge of people voting libertarian? This question is asked by Dr. Paul as well. If liberty is what we claim it is, the principle that protects all personal, social, and economic decisions necessary for maximum prosperity and the best chance for peace, it should be an easy sell. Should we have authoritarianism or liberty? If authoritarianism leads to poverty and war and less freedom for all individuals and is controlled by rich special interests, the people should be begging for liberty. Part of the answer lies in the fact that we as humans tend to not want to deal and face the realities of life. In the past, you didn't have a choice. You had to deal with the realities of killing something if you wanted meat, building some type of shelter, growing something to eat, defending yourself and the ones you cared about from the aggression of other people or even animals. All these things had to be dealt with or there is the very real possibility that you or someone else could die. And Dr. Paul addresses this blindfolding ourselves attitude in this clip. As long as most people believe the material abundance would last forever, worrying about protecting a competitive, productive economy and individual liberty seemed unnecessary. This point should not be taken as a slam against nice things, enjoying the fruits of your labor and the level of society in which you live. Here, Congressman Paul makes it clear he is talking about caring about material goods and forgetting about maintaining liberty. It is good that material abundance is a result of liberty, but if materialism is all that we care about, problems are guaranteed. So what happens when we decide to focus on things, our success, making sure we make it, and not worried about what the government is up to, what they may be trying to get away with while we're worrying about our individual situation? Bigger government, more spending, more debt, more poverty for the middle class, and a more intense scramble by the elite special interests will continue. What he is emphasizing is that if we do not keep an eye on what is happening in our government, now not just Washington, but at all levels, the people we elect, our representatives, are going to sell, them, sell us out to the highest bidder. Now the founders knew this. Why do you think they were so keen on trying to be sure no branch of government dominated the system? Why do you think they wanted the majority of the power to remain in the hands of the people? Precisely to avoid what we have today. Government for sale to the highest bidders. Just knowing about the problem is not good enough, though, as we hear in this next clip. If the underlying cause of the crisis is not understood, we cannot solve our problems. The issue of warfare and welfare, deficits, inflationism, and corporatism, bailouts, and authoritarianism cannot be ignored. We need to understand the issues at hand. Otherwise, we are going to be subject to the quality of the analysis being presented. Whatever the talking heads on television say, Whatever the bloggers say. Heck, whatever you hear on the radio, even this show. You need to be sure and run everything through your BS filter. Your freedom and liberty filter that you are developing by listening to this show each week. It might not happen immediately, 
but it will happen over time as you listen. You will start to hear the talking points that are said over and over that ultimately are being put out in order to restrict your freedom in some way, to make it easier to make you a compliant and subservient population. Do you think the government wants a bunch of people talking back? Are you crazy? No government wants that. In this next clip, Dr. Paul talks about hearing these supposed freedom-loving people in the government. Everyone claims support for freedom, but too often it's for one's own freedoms and not for others. Too many believe that there must be limits on freedom. They argue that freedom must be directed and managed to achieve fairness and equality, thus making acceptable to curtail through force certain liberties. Some decide what and whose freedoms to be limited. These are the politicians whose goal in life is power. No better words could be said to cut through all the BS from the politicians and the bureaucrats. You can't forget them. They both want power. And in order for them to have power, you have to have less freedom. More freedom for you equals less power for them. So you know which side of the equation they are going to be working on, their power. Our job for those of us who believe that a different system than the one that we had had for the last hundred years has driven us to this unsustainable crisis is to be more convincing that there is a wonderful, uncomplicated, and moral system that provides the answers. We had a taste of it in our early history. We need not give up on the notion of advancing this cause. It worked, but we allowed our leaders to concentrate on the material abundance that freedom generates while ignoring freedom itself. Now we have neither, but the door is open out of necessity for an answer. And we have the answer. Freedom and liberty, that is the only answer. The question is, will you help in spreading this message? Are you going to start educating yourself in the Constitution? And more importantly, educating your children, your grandchildren, co-workers, friends, and even neighbors. Are you going to help lead them to enlightenment in the ideals of freedom and liberty? To the liberating mindset that what other people do is none of your concern. As long as they are not infringing on your liberty and you are not infringing on theirs. I can tell you it is almost a spiritual awakening when you realize this. When that light finally turns on your, in, your, in your head that you are the solution. You have the power to change things. But you have to exercise it. Because like a muscle, if you don't exercise your power to make the changes that need to be made, that power will atrophy. And in the political system, you'll actually end up losing that power to the government through the restrictions of your freedoms. Take a second and think about all the power over your life that you have lost and the subsequent freedom. I think you'll be surprised and maybe it will even motivate you to start helping turn the government around. All right, we're up on the bottom of the hour break already. See how fast this show just flies by. This is the Patrick Riggin Show, and we'll be back after these important messages. Be sure and listen to them. These are the companies that keep us on the air. Be sure and, heck, if you don't need what they're selling, at least call them and thank them for sponsoring the Patrick Riggin Show. This is Patrick Riggins. We will return after a couple of minutes. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Reagan Show. You know, if you guys aren't watching online, you really need to. <laughs> you really should. <laughs> <laughs> because it is very interesting what goes on in this studio. <laughs> How, <clears throat> I guess that was a duo with me yes. and Tori doing the background singers to the spinners. <laughs> <laughs> no but audio, it, just visual only. Yeah, well, you know, it, you could, we were lip syncing with the music, so... That was working out. But if you want to watch that, it's at WNOXFM.com. Well, you can't watch it now. You'll just have to... I'm sure Tori will be doing something before the show's over. 
<laughs> He's oh, usually I'm, pretty good about that. Behind your back, you'll never know. Yeah, exactly. Bunning ears over my head. <laughs> All right. Starting the second half of the Patrick Reagan show, and I wanted to get back into this Ron Paul stuff just a little bit because for no other reason that what he's got to say is just so daggum logical. <laughs> It's it's we're just I was I was talking to one of the guys here at the station here and we're talking about how we're just the the Libertarian Party is almost w- waiting for a Reagan to come along that how he talked about conservatism we're well. waiting for this person yeah this whoever it is that's in the wings that's going to step up and be the person who sells this maybe I'll step up and do it maybe I'll run for office there you go. yeah that'll uh, that'll happen. <laughs> All right. Anyway, getting back into this, we were talking about uh, trying to get the government turned around. And and I've mentioned on this show before, when you're trying to do something like that, you are working against an institution of government that is supported by a number of diverse organizations. And Dr. Paul addresses that in this clip. Sadly, many religious groups, secular organizations, and psychopathic authoritarians endorse government-initiated force to change the world, even when the desired goals are well-intentioned, or especially when they're well-intentioned. The results are dismal. The good results sought never materialize. The new problems created require even more government force as a solution. The net result is institutionalizing government-initiated violence and morally justifying it on humanitarian grounds. I love that. Psychopathic authoritarianism. (laughs) And psychopathic authoritarians. So what we've done is we're creating a cycle of government solutions, creating more problems, calling for more government solutions, which creates more problems, etc., etc., Government in a free society should have no authority to meddle in the social activities or the economic transactions of individuals, nor should government meddle in the affairs of other nations. All things peaceful, even when controversial, should be permitted. This is what hangs a lot of people up. All things peaceful, even when controversial, controversial. (laughs) <laughs> should be permitted. The misunderstanding that tolerance is an endorsement of certain activity motivates many to legislate moral standards which should not only be set by individuals making their own choices. One of the biggest problems you are going to have in trying to correct your deficiencies in thinking about freedom and liberty is other people's freedom and liberty. You are going to have to remain vigilant in making sure you are not trying to impose your morals on others through law. Unfortunately, this is one of the big problems. Too many people want to tell others what to do, how to live. One of the biggest steps you can make towards becoming more free is allowing others to be free as well. Allowing other adults to make decisions you see as detrimental in their lives. These decisions may in fact be detrimental, or they may not be. But either way, you have to allow them to make those decisions for themselves. Now, you can offer advice. You can give your opinion. I do it on this show every week. But what you cannot do is impose your advice or opinions. That is where you cross the line. Now, what you may say, Patrick, they don't realize what they are doing, how they are hurting themselves. Hey, I understand that completely. But sometimes people have to trip and fall to learn things. And yes, sometimes people learn lessons too late. They end up killing themselves through their mistakes. As I said two weeks ago, this is the dark side of freedom. This is the racist, discriminatory underbelly of freedom. But it is still freedom. And when we start restricting it, we start down the road. We are already too far down in this country. 
To achieve liberty and peace, two powerful human emotions have to be overcome. Number one is envy, which leads to hate and class warfare. Number two is intolerance, which leads to bigoted and judgmental policies. These emotions must be replaced with a much better understanding of love, compassion, tolerance, and free market economics. Freedom, when understood, brings people together. When tried, freedom is popular. You could say, by becoming more freedom and liberty minded, you are actually becoming more mature. You are growing as a person. You can look around and see most all the people wanting a government handout, wanting complete government care, are in their minds nothing more than children. I've stated as such on this show numerous times. So in over overview, here is the problem in our government. A government that pretends to protect liberty, but is granted power to arbitrarily use force over the people and foreign nations. Though the grant of power many times is meant to be small and limited, it inevitably metastasizes into an omnipotent political cancer. This is the problem for which the world has suffered throughout the ages. This is what our founders knew. They knew these types of problems would crop up because they studied history. They know how humans acted unless restrained by a constitution. A written document specifying how much power one human or group of humans could have over another. They knew inevitably some people would work to take freedom from another. To give themselves power over others. Not always through militaristic methods but sometimes through a type of passive-aggressive method of caring for others, for taking over the responsibility for another's care without their consent. Now, what would the ideal government be? Well, here it is. A government designed to protect liberty is a natural right as its sole objective. The people are expected to care for themselves and reject the use of any force for interfering with another person's liberty. Government is given a strictly limited authority to enforce contracts, property ownerships, settles disputes, and defend against foreign aggression. There you go. If you want to know what we should be working towards, there it is. Will it be an easy road? Nope. I wish it could be, but it isn't. Dr. Paul's use of the word cancer is appropriate here. The government is a cancer, eating away at what made this country great. And like a physical cancer, fighting it is going to take courage, will, and a determination to prevail. If you want some encouragement, it is this. We can prevail. Unlike physical cancer, we have total control over what is happening in this country. If enough people want to change things, we can. It's that simple. We don't have to take some medication, then hope and pray that it works. If we get enough people together and vote our ideals, things will change. That's all there is to it. But it is going to require that very solution, getting people convinced to vote and make the changes necessary. Now, on my end, I plan on having this radio show on the air until we achieve this. Until we once again can breathe the fresh and invigorating air of freedom. When we have defeated this system that has been corrupted. All I ask of you is to help just a little bit in this fight. If there are enough of us, each one won't have to do much because many hands make light work. If we all sit around and wait on one person to do everything, then it isn't going to get done. That is exactly why those uh, who are big government types, they want you to believe your efforts will nothing, that you're spinning your wheels. But don't listen to them. Listen to this show and get others to listen as well. It is almost like a church here each week. I guess it's a good thing we're here on Sunday afternoons. You can go to whatever church you want or even attend if you don't want. But each week, you need to tune into this show for your, I guess, church of freedom and liberty. So if someone asks you why you didn't go to see you at church on Sunday, you can tell them you were listening to it on the radio. And be sure and tell them to join us here as well. The more we have listening, the more people we have getting motivated towards liberty. All right, we're up on our break here and uh, the Patrick Reagan Show. I guess your weekly Sunday afternoon Church of Freedom and Liberty. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking freedom. I'm talking liberty. 
and the restoration of the Constitution. Ah. Uh, that's why I'm a talk show host and not a preacher. <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. Tori, do you know what that theme is from? Rockford Files. There you go. Very good. <laughs> I always like that song on the lead in there. I, I really need to get, when they do the answering machine right at the first. I always liked his car. Didn't he drive the gold Trans Am? Yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, James Barner. <laughs> Getting back to the last segment of the Patrick Riggins show. Causing problems for people, the right and the left, and... Well, everybody, all of us that are libertarians don't really cause problems with. But, Patrick, uh, don't be an instigator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick's already an instigator. <laughs> but real quick, what I want to hit in this last segment, ever since the election, well, before it actually, we have heard this refrain ratcheted up recently here, just right after this election. Everyone is screaming and yelling about Obama raising your taxes. He's going to screw up the economy. He's going to ruin everyone. The problem with this thinking is that Obama cannot do anything without the aid of Congress. Lest you forget, all legislation must be passed by Congress. If Obama asks for taxes to be raised, Congress can tell him, I don't think so, and pass whatever they want. If Obama tries to circumvent Congress by using executive orders, then Congress can refuse to fund the agencies carrying them out or attach requirements to those agencies' budgets that the money spent not be used for that executive order. Congress can even impeach Obama for overstepping the authority of the executive branch. Although if they did that, <laughs> you could have impeached uh, just about every president we've had for the last 10, 20 years. <laughs> so, yes, even even Bush, he, he could have been impeached. They've, they've all overstepped their executive authority. Now, Congress can do this. They just have to have the backbone to do it, which means, and you've heard this before, they need to hear from you to pressure them to do the right thing. Let's face it, they aren't going to do it on their own. Now, I, I kind of worry about venturing into this, and, and don't start ringing my phones off the hook, especially after the last show there. But instead of signing petitions calling for your state to secede, why don't you write your congressional representative and insist on them following the Constitution? Hold their feet to the fire. Put as much effort into this secession and getting everything signed, let's call it what it is. It's just a relevant petition for secession from the United States. You know, the big government types love it when you do this. Because, one, it gives them an argument that people aren't thinking clearly. And thus, they don't need to listen to you. And, two, it wastes your time and energy pursuing these obviously bogus projects instead of organizing and working to get them thrown out of office at the next election. You need to start riding your representative's butt on all this foolishness. That is what is going to change things. Email, send letters, show up at their town meetings, go to their local offices, as well as their offices in Washington if you happen to be up there. You have to ask yourself, are you willing to do what's necessary to turn this country around? Are you willing to do that? Because if you aren't, then you might as well shut up and suffer quietly. Because your complaining without action serves no purpose at all. In fact, it probably hurts by discouraging others who might be trying to help, trying to elect good people to office, to educate those who are ignorant, not stupid, 
there's a big, big difference there. Just ignorant about what is going on in this country. You need to start harassing the crap out of your representatives in order to get these changes made. As I've said before, the people who fought in the Revolutionary War weren't guaranteed anything. But they still fought for the idea of being free. Not the guarantee, just the idea that if they won, they would be free. They could gain their freedom. They deserved their freedom. But now we have people who don't want to fight for their freedom. They want to sit back, watch TV, waste their time while their country goes down the tubes. Oh, they'll complain while things are bad. In reality, though, they just want to forget about everything and let someone else handle it. So it is going to be up to you, my listeners and others you turn on to this radio show. You guys and gals are going to be the ones who turn this around, who make it happen. And even if someone else gets the glory, as often happens, you will know, and I will know, who really stopped this march towards less freedom and work to turn the ship around. And that's all that really matters, that we achieve the goals we set out to complete. Now, I know you can do it. We can do it. All we need is a little driving motivation, and we'll get it done. That's basically my whole... I hate that word, basically. I just used it, Tori. Oh, basically. <laughs> basically, everyone uses that. But And I, and I hate... I hate, basically, and I hate people who speak with a higher intonation at the end of a sentence. You know what I mean? Talking like that? Like everything's a question? Anyway, I'm getting off track. Focus! <laughs> Focus! <laughs> anyway, I can get a little off track. I spent, I had a good show today. We had Ron Paul on all day, which for me is just a great show. That man has a lot to say, and, and he's very logical, and... And knows exactly where we need to go as a country. Anyway, we're up on the end of the show. And I want to thank you for listening this week. I encourage you to go out, hit our Facebook page. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And if you need to know how to spell Riggins, it's R-I-G-G-I-N-S. Some people mistake it for Reagans, but it's Riggins. I don't think I have that bad of an accent, Patrick Reagan show. But you can go out there, and there's a link there to Ron Paul's speech over at C-SPAN. You can probably also go to cspan.org and find it there. You can also go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Patrick Reagan show. This show will be on in probably a day or so, and you can also get the archives, all the past shows that we've had. You can also send us an email. Our address is patrickreaganshow at gmail.com. That's all together, Patrick Riggins Show at gmail.com. And you can also reach us using the really old-fashioned U.S. mail. Just drop a note and care of the station, WNOX, here on Kingston Pike in Knoxville. And by the way, thank you to everyone who has been writing into the station about the show. I really appreciate it and keep those cards and letters coming. If the station sees enough of a response, who knows? Maybe they'll even add a weekday time slot in addition to Sundays. Now, that would be scary. Patrick during the weekday. <laughs> Join me next Sunday afternoon where once again we'll talk about freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. This is Patrick Riggins. We will see you next Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Have a great week. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on the Patrick Riggins Show every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. Be there.